So I apologize for using my iPad, but the uh, internet went out working. I couldn't print my homily for reflection. So in the movie Talladega Nights, the ballads of Rick Bobby, uh, we hear the expression sh shake and bake. <laughs> Sometimes we hear the brothers throwing this expression on the house shake and bake, you know. And this gospel today is a perfect gospel for shaking and baking in the assembly, you know. <laughs> we have fire and brimstone, we have uh, scaring people about the time they're going to die. Uh, and even the words at the end, where the body is, there also the vultures will gather. So I wasn't feeling inclined for shaking and baking today, so I think the Holy Spirit really drawn me towards focusing on the Psalms. So uh, going back to the Psalms, Psalms 119. It says, blessed are those who, whose way are blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they who observe his decrees, who seek him with all their hearts. With all my heart I seek you, let me not stray from your command. Within my heart I treasure your promise that I may not sin against you. Be good to your servant that I may live and keep your words. Open my eyes that I may consider the wonders of your law. So it begins with, blessed are they whose way are blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. We may ask ourselves, who are they and why are they blessed? The next verses begin to answer this question. Blessed are they, in other words, everyone, everyone who observe his decrees, who seek him with all their hearts. We're told here that blessedness is open to all. And it is faithfulness to God's decrees and seeking Him with all our hearts that imputes this blessedness. This is exactly what St. John says today in the first readings. He exhorts us to be aware of how we are living our lives so that we may not lose what we have worked for, our salvation, eternal life in God. For this reason, he tells us that we must keep God's commandment, not a new commandment, but the one we have had from the beginning. Let us love one another. But what does it mean here? The beginning in time, the beginning of the time of Moses with the Ten Commandments, the beginning when the apostles first met Jesus, the beginning of creation? I think the answer is yes. All of them. First, literally in the beginning, God created mankind in His image. In the image of God, He created them. Male and female, He created them. The Hebrew word for image, tselem, can also be translated as icon. In other words, we have been created to be the icon of God, to be the image and the likeness of His love to one another. Thus, in loving one another, we are, in a way, loving the Creator who continuously loves us into existence. Therefore, St. John is right that we have had this commandment from the beginning, literally. Not simply as something we must do, however, but as part of our own identity. God is love. Being made in His image and likeness, love is also who we are. But then comes sin, and through sin, death. And it is a fact that the wound of sin, if left untreated, so to say, progressively destroys a human capa capacity to love. To love God, to love ourselves, and to love one another. We see this in salvation history, and we can also experience this in our own lives. But when we have lost sight of the law of love, in His mercy, God gave us the Ten Commandments through Moses, to remind us of who we are again. This is what St. Paul says in the letter of Romans. In Romans 5.20, he says that the law entered in so that transgressions might increase. In other words, that we may wake up our consciousness to see how helpless, how miserable we are when left to our own strength without God's grace. And Paul concludes, but where sin increased, grace overflowed all the more. So that as, as sin reigned in death, grace might also reign through justification for eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. With all my heart I seek you. Let me not stray from your commands. Within my heart I treasure your promise 
that I may not sin against you. Even with all our heart, with all our strength, there was nothing that we could do after the fall for us not to stray from God's commandments if Jesus Christ had not come to redeem us. Therefore, in baptism, God has given us all of His creation, a new beginning. We become a new creation in Jesus Christ. But not only a new creation, we become truly ourselves. Yes, our sins are forgiven, but through the work of the Holy Spirit and the sacraments, above all, the Eucharist, we are constantly being fashioned in the image and likeness of God that we are created to resemble. The more we cooperate with this divine operation and realize the treasure that we carry within ourselves at all times, we realize what St. Augustine experienced during his conversion, that we do not have to go very far to seek God and to love Him. He truly abides within us. He truly abides within our neighbor. We're all God's temple. We're also called to worship Him by loving one another. Again, St. John was right. Through Jesus Christ, the old commandment to love one another has become the new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. It is no longer enough for us to love in a human way. God wants us to love as He does, supernaturally, with His own love. He loved us, laying down our lives for one another. Be good to your servant that I may live, and keep your words. Open my eyes that I may consider the wonders of your love. My brothers and sisters, I believe today the Lord desires to open our eyes so that we may truly live, that we may consider the wonders of His law, the wonders of His love. In reality, it is a call for us to remove from our face the masks of who we wish we were so that we may find our true identity and happiness in Christ, forgetting about ourselves and loving one another as Christ loves us. Therefore, he reminds us in the gospel that we do not know when our time will come. Death may come at any hour, unexpectedly sooner. We will be ready. Whoever seeks to preserve his life will lose it, but whoever loses it will save it. There's no better way to lose our lives than by loving as God commands us. For true love is indeed a dying, a crucifixion of our selfish desires. Let us love and keep God's love always before our eyes, so that we may not be tempted to turn back and lose all that the Lord has given us, all that we have worked for. Open my eyes, open my heart, Lord, that I may consider the wonders of your law. Amen. Amen. <laughs>